Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Robitaille and today I'd like to discuss Kirchhoff's Law. In an upcoming presentation, I will explain how this law is applied to the standard model in order to account for the solar spectrum. If you are here as a physics student, you will learn Kirchhoff's Law and you should simply repeat it on your exams. However, I hope that you will consider this idea. Kirchhoff's Law is not valid. But please don't argue with your instructor. For the present, just learn as much science as possible. But at the same time, you should know that something is wrong here and it touches on many aspects of physics and astronomy. Eventually, this will become evident to other people. I wrote many papers on Kirchhoff's Law and the links can be found below. In presenting this law, Kirchhoff based his arguments solely on mathematics without experimental evidence. That is a problem since the laws of physics must be based on observational facts, not theory alone. In a recent video, we discussed the laws of Wien, Stefan, and Planck. These laws were valid for black body cavities, which are usually made of graphite or lined with soot. Kirchhoff wanted to make a sweeping generalization about the laws contained not only in black bodies, but in all cavities. His classic paper stated, when a space is surrounded by bodies of the same temperature and no rays can penetrate through these bodies, every pencil in the interior of the space is so constituted with respect to its quality and intensity as if it proceeded from a perfect black body of the same temperature and is therefore independent of the nature and form of the bodies and only determined by the temperature. So what was Kirchhoff saying? He was stating that the radiation contained within any cavity must always be of the same type and must depend only on the temperature of the cavity, the frequency of observation, and nothing else. If you are watching this video as a student, this is what you need to understand for your test. Kirchhoff's law states that cavity radiation is independent of the nature of the walls and that the black body function applies to all cavities. Now let us go a little further than what you will learn in your class. It is obvious that Kirchhoff's claim is false on its face. The National Institutes of Standards and Technology spends millions of dollars carefully building standard black bodies even though Kirchhoff's law claims any opaque cavity would work just as well. Anyway, in his paper, Kirchhoff wrote his law as follows. The emissive power of an object, E, divided by its absorptive power, A, is equal to some function which depends only on temperature and frequency. Kirchhoff added that this was only true in opaque enclosures. In thermal equilibrium, the unspecified function in Kirchhoff's law was eventually given to us by Max Planck. We learned previously that objects in thermal equilibrium, without conduction or convection, emit as much light as they absorbed. Stated another way, the emissive power of an object would be equal to its absorptive power. In Kirchhoff's equation, E would equal A, and we are left with 1 is equal to some function of temperature and frequency. But Kirchhoff did not want that. He wanted an expression for emissive power, so he changed the absorption term to unitless absorptivity. We saw in this video that black bodies are perfectly absorbing, so absorptivity can be fit to 1 for those objects. In that case, the equation states that the emissive power E equals some function of temperature and frequency, which is what Kirchhoff wanted. In order to use this equation though, you have to remember that it only applies to actual black bodies because we could only reach this form by setting absorptivity equal to 1. This means that the function given by Planck's equation remains valid for all real black bodies. Interestingly, we can use Kirchhoff's own law and its claims to demonstrate its invalidity. This can be done in a simple step which everyone can understand. Recall from this video that the absorptivity, reflectivity, and transmissivity of a closed system are the only way that it has to deal with radiative heat transfer. It is also true that under conditions of thermal equilibrium, the absorptivity must be equal to the emissivity. In most books, this law is attributed to Kirchhoff, but the law of equivalence is actually Stewart's since his paper preceded Kirchhoff's by more than a year. But wait a minute, Kirchhoff stated that his equation was valid for all cavities. So let's try something interesting. 
Let's see what happens when the cavity is not made from a perfect absorber, but rather from a perfect reflector. When the walls are perfect reflectors, by our equation, absorptivity and transmissivity must be set to zero. We can still be in thermal equilibrium because the walls are at a single temperature. In this case, Kirchhoff's law becomes emissive power divided by zero is equal to some function of temperature and frequency, and the law explodes. This is because by definition, division by zero is always undefined. It does not matter if the emissive power is zero also, because in that case, the function will still be undefined. In calculus, in order to see if an equation is valid, we usually check its validity at the limits, or both ends of its range. In the case of Kirchhoff's equation, two limits are involved. From the case of the perfect absorber when absorptivity is equal to one, to the case of the perfect reflector when absorptivity is equal to zero. It is clear that for Kirchhoff's law, the relationship falls apart at the second limit. So Kirchhoff was never able to claim that his equation was valid, except of course when dealing with perfectly absorbing cavities. In addition, Kirchhoff's law was unsupported by experiments. In his paper, Kirchhoff did not build cavities made from many different materials to document that the radiation they contained was always black. In fact, scientists of his day would have placed a tiny piece of graphite inside the cavities that they built in order to ensure that the radiation was black. I describe this in my paper on black body radiation and the carbon particle, and in the paper on Stewart's law, which are cited down below. Planck himself constantly places a perfect absorber in his cavities in his classic textbook on black body radiation. And by doing so, he committed a huge mistake. Scientists often describe the piece of graphite as a catalyst, which is something that speeds up a reaction process. But in fact, graphite actually caused the process. Without it in their experiments, they would have never yielded the results that they wanted, no matter how long they had waited. For Kirchhoff, since all the energy of the system was inside the cavity and none was present in the wall, it was easy to insist that blackbody radiation was always independent of the nature of the walls. If one could actually restrict all the energy in the radiation field, then obviously the nature of the walls would not matter. Unfortunately for Kirchhoff, real materials always possess energy in the walls. For instance, this can be in the form of electrons within conduction bands such as found in silver. Silver can be viewed as a nearly perfect reflector, in the same way that graphite can be viewed as a nearly perfect absorber. The attempt to ignore the energy in the cavity walls, when considering their radiation, must be viewed as misaligned with known physics. If you spend a lot of time studying this, you will find that no valid theoretical proof of Kirchhoff's law exists. Kirchhoff advanced two proofs himself. Both were easily refuted and never survived. Planck later tried to write a proof of Kirchhoff's law, and that proof is even more obtuse than either of the proofs advanced by Kirchhoff. In fact, Planck's proof was so poorly formulated that it is astonishing that no one ever complained. You can read a full analysis of Planck's treatment in this paper, which is linked below. Perhaps one day it'll be a video as well. Now we are more familiar with Kirchhoff's erroneous law. The radiation inside arbitrary cavities is simply not black. This is an observation reserved for black bodies. That Kirchhoff's law is false is one of the many factors why modern astronomy has problems. If you'd like to dive deeper into these topics, the papers in the description are for you. In addition, we will re-examine Kirchhoff's law several times in this series and demonstrate why it cannot be valid based on violations of both the first and the second law of thermodynamics. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed this video on Kirchhoff's law. If you did, hit the like button. In addition, subscribe to join me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.